iOS gives us some really powerful APIs for working with strings, including splitting them up into arrays, removing white space, and even checking spellings. We've looked at some of these previously, but there's at least one major addition I wanna look at now. In this app we're building, we're loading a file from our app bundle containing 10,000 eight-letter words, each of which can be used as a starter word for the game. These words we stored one word per line, so what we really wanna do is load a string of words, then split them up into an array of strings so we can pick one randomly. Now Swift gives us a method called components separated by that converts a single string into an array of strings by breaking it up wherever the intermittent string is found. For example, I could say a new method down here. Let's do func test strings like so. I'll make our input string equal to, let's do uh, A space B space C. And I can then say the letters inside that string are input with components separated by a space. So we've got a string here called input with A, B, and C separated by a space here and a space here. So when you run it saying components separated by spaces, we'll get back a three item array with A, then B, and C at zero, one, and two in locations. Now in programming and almost universally, we have a special character sequence to refer to line breaks. It's backslash n. So if we had here a multi-line string, I'll do quote, 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 then quote, 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 to end the multi-line string. Inside there, I'll have A, then B, then C. I could say inputs component, uh, input or component separated by backslash n, break up by line breaks. Now, regardless of what string we're splitting on, the result will be an array of strings. From there, we can read individual values using simple array indexing, that's zero, one, two, and so forth. But Swift gives us another helpful method called random element, and it returns one random item from the array. For example, I could say, uh, let letter be our letters array dot random element. Now, we can see our input string was A, line break B, line break C and we're broken up on line breaks. So we know the letters array won't be empty. It will definitely have values inside there. Swift does not know that. And so this random element method call returns an optional value. Might be A, might be B, might be C, but might be nothing at all if the array we called on happened to be empty. So it's common to use uh, an unwrap here, if let, whatever, or use nil coalescing to provide a default value. Another helpful method is called trimming characters in, which asks Swift to remove certain characters from the start and end of a string. This uses a new type called character set, but most of the time we want one particular behavior, which is removing all white space and all new lines. First the spaces, tab characters, line breaks, da -da -da, all at once. This behavior is so common, it's actually baked right into the character set struct. So we can ask Swift to remove all white, sp white space from a string like this. We'll do let trimmed equals our letter, question mark, again, it's optional, dot trimming characters in, dot white spaces and new lines. There is one last piece of string functionality I want to cover if we dive into the main project. And that's how we cover the, the to look for misspelled words in a string. This functionality is provided through a special class called UI text checker. You don't realize this perhaps yet, but the UI at the start of that name tells us two additional things. First, this class comes from UIKit. Doesn't mean we're loading all the old UI framework here manually though, we get it automatically given to us by SwiftUI on iOS. And second, UIKit and UI Text Checker and similar are all written in Apple's older language, Objective-C. Again, we haven't got a user yet to see here, but it does mean there's a slightly unwieldy API for Swift users. So checking for misspelled words takes four steps in total. First, make a word to check. Second, make an instance of UI text checker so we can get things moving. So we'll say our word is Swift. And our checker is a UI text checker. Step one. Second, we wanna tell this thing how much of our string we want to actually check. 
Now, if you imagine a spell checker and a, a word processing app like Microsoft Word or Apple's Pages and similar, you might want to say, just check the selection of text here, or perhaps check the entire document, both are valid. However, there's a catch, a big catch. Swift uses a very, very clever, very, very advanced way of working with strings, which allows them to mix together simple letters like hello world, but also complex letters like emoji in a single string. However, Objective-C does not use this method of storing its data, which means we've got to ask Swift to make an old style Objective-C string range using the entire length of our Swift string. So we'll write this. Let range equals an NS range, location will be zero, length will be our word, Swift, dot UTF-16, dot count. Now, UTF-16, this is what's called a character encoding, which is a way of storing letters in a string. We use it here so Objective-C can understand how Swift strings are stored. It's a nice bridging format for our two languages. Next up, we can ask our text checker to report where it found any misspelled words in our string, passing in the range to check, plus the position to start from within the range. So you can do things like find, then find next, find next, find next, and so forth. Whether it should wrap around it, which is the end, go back to the beginning again, and also what language it should use for the dictionary. So we'll say, let misspelled range equals our checker dot range of misspelled word in. Boom. For in, that's our string, so I'll write word. For range, that's our range. Starting at, we'll start at the very beginning, so zero. Do you want to go back to the beginning again? No, we don't, so we'll do false. And language will be en, English. And that will send back another objective C string range telling us where the misspelled word was found. Even then, there's another complexity here. Objective-C had no concept of optionals. So instead, it relied on special values to say, whoops, there was missing data here. In this instance, we're being handed back an NS range with some data inside, but it'll tell us it's empty. If there was no spelling mistake inside our word, which it isn't, it means we'll get back a special value, NS not found. This was not found at all in the thing. There was no misspelled words found. And so we can check whether our spelling result contains a mistake or not by saying let all good equals does our misspelled range dot location equals ns not found. And that will say true or false if there's a spelling mistake or not. And that's enough API exploration. Let's get into the real project. Make sure we set your stuff back to its starting code.